Good morning, everyone. I'm Maddie from TTG, and I'm joined today um, by some Australia representatives. Uh, we have Emma Rowan from Tourism and Events Queensland. We have Emma Dalzel from Tourism Western Australia and Ali Lee from Tourism Australia. Hi. Um, you may have seen last week's session um, in which we covered uh, selling Sydney and Melbourne um, and the session the week before last, we gave an introduction to selling Australia and kind of a general, general intro. Um, so don't worry if you missed them, uh, you can find them under the videos tab on the TTG Facebook page. This is the third in our series of Australia focused Facebook Lives and there is one more to come next Wednesday. Um, so make sure you tune into that, we'll be releasing the details shortly. Uh, so today we're going to be focusing on how to sell Queensland and Western Australia. So we're going to be talking about the key highlights of Western Australia and Queensland. Um, we're going to be getting some city life updates from Perth and Brisbane. We're talking a bit about the nature and wildlife that is available to see in each of the two states um, and the best ways to get around. So how to build kind of an itinerary um, for your clients. If you have any questions throughout the session, um, feel free to ask them in the comments section and we'll do our best to, uh, to answer them live. Uh, so first, I'm going to come to you, Ali. Um, why would an agent or their client choose to combine Queensland and Western Australia in a holiday? Yeah, sure. Um, so I'll just point out that we're talking about the west and the east coast of Australia, for those that don't know where Western Australia and Queensland are. So you should be able to see in my background here um, the two states that we're um, chatting about today. Um, and while each of them kind of do have some similar landscapes in terms of um, beaches and reefs and outback wildlife. Um, I guess these experiences do also differ quite a lot and they're quite um, complementary to each other. So um, for example, like, like you can see in Emma's background where you've got the red sand coming down to the beach. Um, and similarly in Queensland, we've got rainforest that comes down to um, meet the reef as well. And it's a great way for your clients to really experience that um, diversity across across Australia um, and by having you know experiencing two of those regions that have equally stunning um, landscapes um, and also uh, what else itinerary wise sorry um, they're quite good to combine in terms of there's easy domestic connection so you're looking at it's about four and a half hour flight to go from Perth to Brisbane or Brisbane to Perth um, direct flight there um, and they're also both international gateways so Brisbane and Perth are both international gateways um, so your customers can e either start their Australian journey um, on the east coast and then finish on the west coast and fly home from there um, or equally doing it the other way from west to east and it makes quite a nice triangle of an itinerary um, so quite a good way to combine the two states. Cool um, and obviously the, the direct uh, Qantas flight to Perth launched in March 2018 uh, which made the destination uh, maybe more appealing to UK travellers. Um, what can visitors expect to experience on arrival in the western Australia city of Perth? Um, Emma Dalzell. So I love this direct flight and honestly if the, you're wanting to get to Australia quickly and easily you've got to get on that direct flight. So the flight departs London Heathrow at about 1pm and in just over 16 hours you land in Perth at 1pm the next day. So the city of Perth has a super relaxed feel to it and it's super easy to get around the city walking or on public transport. So when your clients arrive in Perth and check into their hotel, I recommend getting out and about into the sunshine, like exploring Elizabeth Quay, um, seeing the Swan River or Kings Park, or in the afternoon sort of heading to Cottesloe Beach because it's only 20 minutes from the city and just watching one of those epic West Coast sunsets. So by getting out and about and enjoying the day, you sort of adjust to the time zone and it means you just wake up feeling really refreshed. So Perth, it's had this huge transformation in the past five years with about 25 new hotel openings. So it's making it one of the most affordable cities in Australia. Um, the other reason I really love Perth is how easy it is to do day trips. So Swan Valley wineries, they're only 20 minutes from the city and the Boho Town um, Fremantle with cool markets and Little Creatures Brewery, that's only 25 minutes from Perth or you could be swimming with dolphins in Rockingham, only 40 minutes from Perth. Wow, brilliant. I mean, easy to, easy to get around then, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. And 
And kind of what's your top recommendation for Perth? I mean, what's kind of the, the thing that agents should really make sure that is definitely on their client's itinerary? So I definitely recommend Rottnest Island. Um, you have to take a boat cruise over there and meet the super cute quokkas. Like they are just adorable. Um, according to the internet, they are the world's happiest animal. So um, if you're wanting to check it out for yourself, have a look at the hashtag quokka on Instagram. Yeah. I, I love quokkas though. They've got such happy faces. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so while, while we're talking about these emerging cities in Australia, um, sort of, uh, what's the capital of Queensland, which is Brisbane, like? Yeah, it's a really exciting time for Brisbane. Um, so if you haven't been for a few years, I'd definitely recommend either you go or you send your clients there. Because similar to Perth, it's undergone a huge amount of regeneration over the last couple of years. And then a whole host of new leisure hotels have opened throughout the city. There's new entertainment precincts like Howard Smith Wharfs, which is just underneath the Story Bridge, actually on the river. Um, new microbreweries, cocktail bars, really cool um, restaurants opening there too. But don't just take our word for it. So Condé Nast um, Traveller recently um, log logged us as one of the um, top cities or places to visit in 2020. So um, it's definitely um, getting um, the look in. Um, but what I love about Brisbane is just how outdoorsy it is. So it's got this sort of subtropical temperature all year round. It's the perfect place to get outside, get into the botanical gardens. And, um, you know, you can wander along the South Bank. You might even want to take a dip in the South Bank pool. Or for the culture buffs, you've got the GOMA, the Gallery of Modern Art as well. So there's exhibitions all year round. So I think, you know, our clients are going to be really amazed at how much the city's changed, how much it's got to offer. And it is just the perfect place to start an itinerary um, in Queensland. And it's, you know, it's great just to find out how warm and welcoming and friendly our Queenslanders are. Yeah. And, and have you been to Brisbane yourself? I mean, what, do you have a favourite thing to do there? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, it's an amazing city. I can't rave about it enough. Um, but I think for me, um, it was seeing the city by bicycle. So there's some really great tours that you can do, that you can get your clients out and about, get them along the river. And um, you can actually cycle up to Eat Street Markets, which is up in North Shore. Um, it's a really cool little sort of like street foodie spot um, where my recommendation there is to try the dumplings. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> um, so as well as having these dynamic cities, um, Queensland and Western Australia are both really rich in nature and wildlife. Um, so I'll, I'm going to go through a few of the highlights um, that visitors can see when it comes to nature and wildlife. Um, so kind of Queensland, do we want to start with um, the highlights there? Yeah, um, we're really lucky. So the state is so rich in, um, you know, really unique habitats and environments. And even from sort of the south in Brisbane, heading all the way up the coast, up to the tropical north, up to the tropics of the Great Barrier Reef um, region, it's just so contrasting. So up in the tropics, um, you know, that's where sort of two World Heritage listed sites actually meet. So the Daintree Rainforest and the Great Barrier Reef. So the Daintree Rainforest, it's one of the world, well, it is the world's oldest living rainforest. It's actually older than the Amazon and it's just so rich in flora and fauna. And, you know, you've got the chance here to spot some really unusual critters. So you've got, you know, the prehistoric looking cassowary bird, which is this enormous, sort of, you know, blue faced bird. Um, you know, you've got crocodiles up here and you've even got tree kangaroos. So they're kangaroos that actually live in the, in the branches of trees. So, you know, really unique wildlife up here. And then, of course, you've then got the Great Barrier Reef. So um, no trip to Queensland is um, complete without a visit to the, to the reef. Yeah, it's really fun facts in there. Be useful for agents to you know, feed those back to their clients, definitely. Um, talking of the Great Barrier Reef, um, that's obviously going to be on the hot list for any traveller visiting Queensland. Um, but what, what do you think is the best way to see it? There's heaps of different ways that your um, clients can head out and see it. So snorkeling and um, diving, getting into the water is definitely, um, you know, must be done. It's, you know, to see that diverse marine life and um, see the corals, um, you know, it's got, that's a fantastic way to do it. But, you know, other ways to do it, you know, I've been lucky. I've been up in a helicopter out at Cairns, up and over the reef, um, up and over, um, you know, the Green Island. You can actually see turtles from the air you know you're looking down bird's eye view of the water it's this color this beautiful blue color so that's a really good option um, and then along the reef there's a few ways that you can actually sleep on the reef so up in the tropical north region you can sleep 
in a swag style tent or on a pontoon. Um, you know, you wake to the sound of the, the ocean the next morning. Um, and then in the Whit Sundays, um, they've just launched um, underwater accommodation. So it's hotel under the surface of the water. Um, but I think, um, you know, visiting a Great Barrier Reef Island is also really, really special. So you've got, you know, luxury options, you've got some really castaway chic options, new openings in the Whit Sundays. Um, which have only just come online last year. Um, and then I think for me, a real immersion into nature is Lady Elliot Island in the Southern Great Barrier Reef. So I was lucky to visit last year and you know, within 30 seconds of getting into the water, five enormous um, rays had swum underneath me. Like it's just incredible. So these are just a few of the ways that you can do it, but there's heaps and heaps of other ways to, to see and experience the reef too. Yeah, no, it's definitely on my wish list for the future. <laughs> yeah. Um, and kind of what about the nature and wildlife in Western Australia, Emma? So we have the Ningaloo Reef, which is on the Coral Coast. Um, and this incredible marine park was actually established as a World Heritage Area in 2011. So it's actually the world's largest fringing reef, a little bit different to the Great Barrier Reef. Um, it means that you can walk directly from the beach to the reef and it makes it really perfect for families or beginning snorkelers. Um, also the temperatures, they're like sort of a balmy 22 to 26 degrees. So you can enjoy swimming and snorkeling all year round. There's actually um, 250 different species of coral and 450 different species of marine life. So you can expect to see dugongs, turtles, tropical fish, but um, I'd have to say my favourite are the big three. So whale sharks, which you can see between March and August humpback whales, which you can see between July and October, and manta rays, which you can see all year round. And so if people are really keen on seeing all three, put July into your calendar as the month to do that. So the other really great thing is that a lot of the tours along the Ningaloo Reef are really small groups. So five to 10 people max, and you really get this incredible sort of um, opportunity to see these magnificent creatures up close and personal. The other thing that I really like is that many of the operators in the region, they actually donate a percentage of the tours back to the research and conservation. So the area is protected for heaps of other people to come and enjoy. Wow, that's brilliant. Yeah. And Ali, how, how do these two reefs differ from each other? Yeah, I mean, um, I think that even though they are quite different, they actually complement each other really well. And I've been lucky enough to experience both Ningaloo Reef and the Great Barrier Reef, and they're both absolutely incredible experiences. Um, and I think it's about how you experience them and the experiences that you get there um, that makes them so uniquely Australian. Um, and also, um, why they complement each other so well. So for instance, if you're combining them in one itinerary for your clients um, and you know, perhaps they start their reef experiences in Western Australia um, and have those marine encounters, you know, with a fish the size of a double decker bus, which is the, you know, whale sharks. Um, and then they pop over to Queensland where, you know, they're gonna do a scenic flight over the Great Barrier Reef, which is, you know, the only reef you can see from space, which is amazing, um, and sleep on the reef. And it's a really great way for your customers to, um, I guess, get the best um, aquatic and coastal experiences that Australia has to offer um, from these two different regions. Great, and with so much to see and do in each of these regions, um, just how easy is it to get around? Um, would agents need to you know, be driving and would, would, or would, would customers need to be driving and would agents need to add on car? Um, kind of, if we want to start with Queensland, how, what's the best way to get around? Yeah, I think driving's a really great way to see the state. Um, I think one of my favourite drives is between the Sunshine Coast and the Fraser Coast. Um, so you'd have to have a four by four if you wanted to do this particular drive, but it's called the Great Beach Drive. So the drive itself is actually on the beach. The beach becomes the highway. So normal rules of the road apply. So no speeding as you go up, but um, it's just an amazing experience. So you drive up and you've got like, the you know, the sandy 
beach and um, the sandy cliffs on one side you've got the ocean on the other side and um, we had dolphins following us along the coastline as we did this drive um, and if you're lucky if you go between um, May and November that's when um, our humpback whales are um, migrating along the coastline so you know if you're lucky you'll spot those guys breaching um, as you drive up so once you sort of get up to the the top of um, the Sunshine Coast you can either go from Inskip Point or from Fraser Coast's Harvey Bay and pop over to the World Heritage listed Fraser Island which is just an adventure in itself and um, so you once you're there you can tick off some of the beauty spots the crystal waters of Lake Mackenzie you can spot the dingoes on the beach um, and just be wowed I mean the trees on Fraser Island just sort of grow out of the sand they just it's just incredible um, but my top tip for um, Fraser Island is um, to grab yourself a prime spot for a little drink and watch the sunset on the west side of the island. So maybe Emma can recommend one. Oh, if you're thinking wines, you've got to go Margaret River, maybe um, Vas Felix Chardonnay perhaps would be Ooh, quite good. Really? Which um, if anyone's keen, you can actually buy it from Waitrose. So get on to that. <laughs> yeah, get on Arcado. <laughs> yeah, nice eh? <laughs> yeah, um, and so kind of going back to um, best ways to get around in West in Western Australia, Emma. Um, what's the best way to see the West Coast? So road trips are really popular way for people to get around and just take in all this beautiful scenery and twelve thousand kilometres of coastline. So we've seen a really big trend for camper vans with clients um, just wanting to adventure on their own terms and sort of mix it up a little bit. Um, but really like the nature, food, wine, epic landscapes, it just makes Western Australia like the perfect place for an Aussie road trip. So last October, I actually hosted a famille where we um, took a road trip along the Coral Coast Highway. Um, this shot in the background, we were actually on that beach, which was just one of the most incredible days ever. Um, so we um, flew from Perth north to Monkey Mire and we spent six days road tripping south. So after landing, we just went and headed to Monkey Mire. We spent sort of a, this time in a, a beautiful sunset cruise on Shark Bay. It was just incredible. And then we spent um, a day or two sort of like seeing the dolphins at Monkey Mire. Um, we were with an Aboriginal um, guide named Capes and we checked out the Francois National Park. Um, and then we drove south. Um, exploring sort of all the highlights. So Shell Beach, um, Nature's Window in Kalbarri, we went to Pink Lake. Um, we also did a scenic flight to the Abrolhos Islands. Um, so there's really so much to do just on that road trip. But another really popular one and one worth mentioning is one we're naming the most Instagrammable road trip. And so this drive, it actually takes you along the southwest edge of Australia. So you're going to allow about 11 days, I guess, for this complete loop. And you'll be driving south from Perth, heading towards beautiful Margaret River, spending a few days at wineries, swimming at the beach, maybe even hopping on a whale watch cruise, and then road tripping along pristine coastline to Esperance, where you'll stop and see the kangaroos at Lucky Bay. And then of course, heading to the Golden Outback to see Kalgoorlie, the Super Pit, um, and sort of all the gold fields in that area on your way back to Perth. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, so kind of moving on now to um, kind of Indigenous culture of Australia, that's something we haven't really touched on in these masterclasses yet, um, but it's often an important element to add into an Aussie trip. Um, so Ali, coming to you, um, kind of why are the Indigenous experiences in Australia such a good, a good choice of, of activity to do? Yeah, good question. Um, well, the um, Indigenous culture of Australia is actually the oldest continuing culture in the world. Um, and there's actually, you know, over 500 different tribes around the country and their experiences vary in all different ways in different regions of Australia. Um, and I think I highly recommend this for any agents um, to try to include an Indigenous experience in their itinerary. Um, I think that seeing um, the landscape and, you know, the different mountains or trees or creeks um, through the eyes of an Indigenous Australian really um, just makes it take on a whole different meaning. So um, how they might view a landscape previously before they took it 
tour with an Aboriginal elder and they explained um, just what it means to them and you hear about their creation stories and um, you know what it means to them for medicinal purposes or bush tucker or and the way that they live it just takes on a whole different meaning and it becomes really special and you suddenly view the country a lot differently to how you viewed it before so highly recommend um, any region that you go to in Australia and I think remembering as well that it does vary. So because there's, you know, hundreds of different tribes across the country, an experience that you get in North Queensland in Australia, um, you know, an indigenous experience up there is going to be different to one that you get in Margaret River in Western Australia. Um, they speak different languages even and their traditions vary as well. So um, even if they've been to Australia before and, you, you know, this is the second time itinerary, um, yeah, I think it's worth trying to get that Aboriginal um, experience in there just to really open their eyes to that cultural aspect of Australia. Okay. Interesting to hear how they differ between the two states. Um, so that kind of leads me on nicely to my next question. Um, in Western Australia, Emma, um, which Indigenous experiences would you recommend um, agents to their clients? Kind of what, what is there to do in that arena? Yeah, I, I completely agree with Ali. Um, I really recommend just adding an authentic Aboriginal experience to any of your clients' holidays. So when most tourists, you know, they see the outback, they just see the bush. But when you join a, a tour with a local Aboriginal guide, they see like nature's supermarket. So it's all about sort of ancient fishing techniques or foraging for bush tucker, um, learning about sort of natural medicines or even like ancient rock art. So not many people know, but the Northwest region is home to the world's largest collection of rock art. So with 250 sites, across the Kimberley and Pilbara region. And these are up to 20,000 years old. So just incredible. And um, yeah, definitely worth adding to your itinerary. Um, a few other experiences I would recommend um, are probably the didgeridoo cave tour that you can do in Margaret River. Um, there's also camping with custodians. So this is really unique to Western Australia and it's um, high quality campgrounds that are owned and run by local Aboriginal people. And it gives them employment on country and it supports their local communities. So it's a really um, great sort of way to be able to get that authentic Aboriginal experience. And there's actually a great um, interactive map on waytop.com which maybe we can share in the in the comments after this yeah yeah of course um so kind of moving on to queensland um emma what what uh, indigenous experiences would you recommend for clients in your region yeah it's actually the year of indigenous tourism for us at tourism events queensland so it's the perfect time to have an indigenous experience in queensland and just to, like as Ali said, to sort of walk in the footsteps of the world's two oldest living cultures um, here. So, um, you know, it's a great way to connect with the land and the sea. And there's a few ways that you can do that. So there's a brand new tour, which is just comes out of Cairns, um, where you can combine a day out on the Great Barrier Reef with an indigenous experience. Um, so you go out, you spend a day out in the water, and then on the way back into port, that's when you'll hear sort of these dreamtime stories and learn more about the cultures and the, the guys that actually run the tour are indigenous um, guides themselves. So it's super authentic. Um, but, you know, I just love, you know, getting under the canopy of the rainforest, walking through, doing a walking tour. And as, you know, as Ali said as well, it's um, how they use the earth and the flora as, you know, the pharmacy, as the supermarket. And it's fascinating. It's just so interesting. Um, one of my absolute favourites, though, and I've done this um, and I loved it, was um, I joined an Indigenous guide and we went um, for a walk along the beach. So we barefoot walked along the beach and we went out and we caught our own mud, mud crabs. So we caught them, we went back, we cooked them on the fire, um, ate our, our, um, our catch of the day, had them for lunch, and then we listened to Dreamtime stories and listened to the didgeridoo. And it was just incredible. You know, you're under, you know, out in the open air, amazing. Um, so I, as you know, Emma and Ali have both said, definitely recommend that your clients carve out some time to do this on their trip. Um, and there's, as I say, it's the year of Indigenous tourism for us. So there's some fantastic resources on our um, on our sites, um, on our corporate and consumer sites, which will help you, you know, craft these itineraries with um, an Indigenous element included. 
Yeah, and, and with there being so much um, kind of Australian information out there, um, how, how would you recommend uh, agents stay up to date or find out more about, about your regions? Um, or Ali, do you want to talk about Tourism Australia first? Yeah, sure. Um, I think it's worth mentioning that, um, so we've actually got a collection of signature experiences that Tourism Australia has developed, which are um, kind of the best of the best of these experiences. Um, of all different ones around the country, but we've got one called Discover Aboriginal Experiences, um, and they um, feature just some really genuinely um, amazing Australian um, cultural tours, Indigenous tours around Australia. So I think um, we've actually got a module on that on the Aussie Specialist Program. So it's worth, if anyone wanted to brush up on those uh, Aboriginal tours specifically, definitely check out that Discover Aboriginal Experiences module. Um, and like I've mentioned before, we've also got um, loads of resources on the Aussie Specialist Program, um, including modules for Western Australia and for Queensland. Um, and we're still running that incentive where we're giving away loads of Aussie chocolates um, to anyone, any trainees that become qualified in April. So if you haven't done it yet, then jump on this week and do it. And hopefully you'll um, get something to help spice up your isolation life at the moment. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely oz.com and um, also our consumer website's also quite good um, for extra resources as well. If there's any um, tough questions that I know we're getting about, um, you know, about when borders open and things like that, jump on australia.com and that's up updated regularly. So um, watch that one for um, up-to-date info. Cool. And um, what about Tourism Western Australia, Emma? Um, how would you recommend agents stay up to date or find out more about your region? So westernaustralia.com is a great place. Just it has everything from like inspiration, itineraries and updates. So great to jump on that. Um, as Ali mentioned, the Western Australia module on the Aussie Specials program, it's your go-to if you want to sort of get up to speed on everything to sell WA. Um, and I guess just worth mentioning, while the world is on lockdown, it is the perfect time to get on board with these virtual tours. Um, so WA has a whole selection of different virtual tours. So a couple that are worth mentioning, um, the Western Australia Facebook page at the moment has a series of 360 videos. So they're shared daily. Um, the Bustleton Jetty uh, actually has an underwater observatory daily live stream that you can um, check in with. Um, there's postcards from um, our backyard, which is by way talk. Um, so you can learn to make fire with Josh from Kumal Dreaming, which I just love, or be a castaway with capes from Shark Bay. Um, Staircase to the Moon, which is like a live stream um, of that. And there's also stargazing. So a whole heap of virtual tours that are um, sort of available with the WA, just so that you can get that inspiration right now. Yeah, no, it's great, it's great, especially at this point in time. Yeah. Um, so Queensland, uh, coming to you, Emma, what about um, kind of more extra info for your region? Yeah, so our consumer website um, and our consumer blog is a fantastic place um, to start our social channels. So follow us on Facebook, on Instagram. Um, you know, there's similar to um, Emma from Western Australia, we've got a whole host of virtual tours and really immersive ways that you can, um, sort of under, you know, get, get under the skin of the destination. I think one of my favourite at the moment is the Lone Pine um, Sanctuary's koala cam. So you can actually watch these sleepy koalas um, as they have their breakfast. Um, head over to our, um, our corporate website um, where you can sign up, uh, subscribe to our trade newsletter. So that's teq.queensland.com. So get onto our trade newsletter and we'll be sending out updates regularly about all the latest openings and you know what's going on in the state. Um, as I've already mentioned, um, our Indigenous ebook is um, also available to download. So that's a really great um, resource and asset if you are looking to add um, Indigenous um, experiences to an itinerary. Or just send me a note directly, emma.rowan at queensland.com. So yeah, few ways. Great, thanks. Well, that brings us to the end of this session. I just want to say um, thank you to everyone for watching and for those of you who have commented. I can see Kathy and Ada and Anastasia's adventures um, are all there as well. So thanks very much for tuning in and for posting your comments. Um, if you have any questions uh, about what we've chatted about or anything we've missed, uh, feel free to type them in the comment section and we will uh, get back to you as soon as we can. 
Um, so yeah, thanks very much for watching and don't forget to tune in to next week's um, instalment, the last, last one in the series, uh, which will be at 11am on Wednesday. Thanks very much. Good. Bye Thank bye. you. Bye. Okay.